Okay, let's go ahead and solve this problem. And what we're doing here is we're going to simplify this radical expression. Now, a lot of you see this symbol going on in the problem. And this symbol by itself, most people in mathematics would call this a square root. And that is correct. Now, a square root is a square root because right up here, there's actually a little 2. We don't really write that 2. We just use this symbol. That's a square root. But in this particular problem, we're not dealing with the square root. We're dealing with the cube root. So this broader topic that we're dealing with, this symbol here, right here, whether it's a 2 or 3, is something called a radical. So we're dealing with radicals. This is a square root. This is a cube root. So you want to get used to that word, radical, radical expressions, radical equations, etc. So um, anyways, what we're going to try to do here is find the cube root of 192 and multiply by 5. Now, um, a lot of you out there, you know, probably could do this problem, okay? Hopefully, you can be like, oh, I know how to do this. Well, try to do this without the aid of a calculator. Matter of fact, if you could do this uh, with a calculator or without a calculator, put your answer into the comment section. And I'm not looking for some sort of decimal value here either. I'm looking for something algebraically. I'll give you a bit of a hint. You're going to have one of these in your answer. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do uh, here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And I'm telling you right now, you can't be successful in math. And I'm especially speaking to those of you out there that think you're bad at math or struggling in math. Okay, what you need is great math instruction that's clear understandable and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, check out my math help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. It will have a huge positive impact on your ability to be successful in math. Now, if you're preparing for some sort of test that has a math section on it, a lot of you out there, probably most of you may be taking a test like this. You don't even realize any kind of placement test, entrance exam, uh, things like, you know, if you're going into the military, ASVAB, or going into trying to get into school, SAT, ACT, or the Alex exam, uh, AccuPlacer, these are placement exams that colleges use, huge exams, CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, you get the idea, I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, I have award-winning homeschool math courses that uh, might interest you. Hopefully you have great math notes, okay? If you do not, you need to start working on improving your notes. But in the meantime, you can use mine. I'm going to leave links to my math notes in the description of this video. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that helps me out big time. Okay, so let's get into this problem. And as promised, I'm going to give you the answer right now. And there it is. Here is the answer that I'm looking for. Okay, I don't want you to go into your calculator and do this uh, calculation right here. Matter of fact, that would be kind of an interesting problem because a lot of you probably wouldn't even know how to do that, okay? Uh, so you want to get to know how to use your calculator for sure and be able to calculate the exact decimal value of this. But uh, what I'm looking for is this, all right? So the 5 times the cube root of 192 is equal to 20 times the cube root of 3, okay? So this is the final answer. And if you got this right, ooh, that's pretty impressive. I will give you a nice little happy face and A++, and I'll give you 110% and a few stars to make you feel extra special today. Nice job, okay? But if uh, you're a little bit confused about this or you're like totally lost, well, let's get into it right now. All right, so here's what you want to know. So we have five times the cube root of 192. Now, what the, the probably the, um, the main key to understanding this problem is the following, okay? When you have the square root of a number, like let's say the square root of 10, the square root, because there's a little 2 up there, you can write that as 10 to the 1 half power. Okay, so this little number right here becomes a denominator. It's always over 1. Okay, well, that's not the case, but let's just kind of keep it simple here. So the square root is 1 half. Okay, so this 2 is the denominator. So the cube root of 182 is actually equal to 1 over 3, okay, 192 to the 1 third power, because this little 3 is going to be acting as our denominator. This is something we call rational exponents. You definitely need to understand uh, how this works, okay? So if you understood this, you just kind of follow the pattern. So the cube root of 192 is the same thing as 192 to the 1 third power. Okay, so if you understood that, that's excellent. And so let me go and erase this. So what we need to do is figure out what 192 to the one-third power is. That's really where the work is at. 
And then once we figure out what this is, we'll multiply that by 5. Now, the way you need to do this is we have to factor 192. Okay, you want to factor this down just like a good old factor tree. And uh, you should be doing this like in middle school or at least have experience with this. But the way you do that is just start um, looking for numbers that go into 192. So I'm going to just start with 3. Okay, so you can, you can use any numbers to kind of break this up. But you're looking for all the prime factors of 192. Your factor tree can look different than mine, but your answer, your final answer, uh, there's only one final answer. Let's just say that. Okay, so uh, 3 goes in 192, 64. So when you have a prime factor, I like to circle them. Okay, that means that we can't factor anymore. So 3 times 64 is the same thing as uh, 64 is the same thing as 8 times 8. We can still factor here. And 8 uh, can be, uh, these right here can be prime factored as 2 times 2 times 2. These are prime numbers. So I can write that as a power 2 times 2 times 2 is 2 cubed. So I have another 8 over here. So I have 2 cubed times 2 cubed. So I'm kind of um, speeding this up a little bit by showing you the, all the prime factors. And these ones I wrote in powers. Okay, so 192 is equal to 3, this prime factor, times 2 cubed times this other 2 cubed. Okay, now we need to know this property of exponents here, a to the m times a to the n. Anytime you are multiplying powers that have the same base, this big number down here is the same or variable, we simply add the exponents, okay? So this is equal to a to the m plus n, okay? So hopefully you knew that. If you didn't, here it is right there. Okay, so uh, this final factoring of 192 is going to be, or 192 is equal to 3, this prime factorization, times 2 to the 6th power, Okay, we don't want to write this this way, 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Anytime you have uh, something you can write as a power, uh, definitely do that. Okay, so this is what we need right here. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and replace that 192 with this stuff, and we'll see how we can get the answer here. All right, so again, we have uh, 5 times a cube root of 192. We know that uh, 192 or the cube root of 192 is the same thing as 192 to the one third power. And now we know that 192, in case we just factored it, is equal to three times two to the sixth power. So I'm gonna replace that 192 times this. So we're gonna take these numbers to the one third power. So we need to know another property of powers and exponent and that exponents, and that is this. Anytime you have an outside exponent, just uh, uh, and we're taking a power to an outside exponent, something like this, 2 to the 4th to the 3rd power, well, all you need to do is just multiply that outside uh, power times the inside power. So that would be 2 to the 12th, okay? So in this case, the rule is a to the um, m times n. And this could be multiple powers on the inside. So we're going to take this 1 3rd and multiply it by 3. But what is the power of 3 up there? Well, it's just 1, okay? We, we It's 3 to the 1st is the same thing as 3. But let's just put a little exponent up there so we're not lost. So we're going to distribute the 1 3rd times the 1 and the 1 3rd times the 6. Okay, so 3, or sorry, uh, 1 times 1 3rd is, of course, 1 3rd. So when I multiply that 1 3rd times this power, I get 3 to the 1 3rd. And then 1 3rd times 6, hopefully all of you are experts in fractions. If you're not, you got to check out some of my YouTube videos on fractions. They literally got millions of views. So this is going to be 2. Okay, so now we got 2 to the uh, second power. So 6 times 1 third is 2. And so uh, now we have to deal with this. Okay, and what is this uh, telling us? Well, we have 2 squared is 4. We have 3 to the 1 third. And now this is all multiplication. It's going to be this times this times this. So this is all one big multiplication problem. Okay, this is uh, going to be one big product. So now I'm going to be like, okay, when we're multiplying, remember, order doesn't make a difference. So I'll take 5 times 4. That's going to give me 20. So 20 times what? Well, I, I still got this 3 to the 1 third right here. So we got to um, take this 3 to the 1 third and remember what we learned about radicals, okay? Remember, we this is the same thing as the cube root of 3, okay? So remember... If I wanted, if I had the cube root of three, I could write that as three to the what one third. 
Okay, think of it that way, right? This is going to be the denominator. So when you do see a fractional exponent like this, a rational exponent, you can uh, write it back again in a radical form. You need to know how to go from this direction back to this direction. Okay, and this takes practice, but something you absolutely need to know if you're studying any sort of algebra course. So we don't want to leave our, we don't want to leave our answers as three to the one third. We want to write it, put it back in radical form, and there is our final answer. Okay, so again, if you got this right, matter of fact, I might throw in a few extra stars, and I'm going to, instead of 110%, you know, let's go ahead and give this, uh, make this 150%. Look at that, I tell you. Don't you love those grades? I tell you, way back when I went to school, high school in the, uh, in the early 80s and elementary school, I never remember, uh, I never personally remembered uh, getting you know, like 150%. You know, sometimes you get like a 105%. But yeah, you know, I hate to say it, there has been kind of over the decades some great inflations, uh, great inflation going on where people have these crazy GPAs, you know, the most you could get way back in the good old day was like 4.0. Now people have got like 5.2 or whatever the case is. But hey, listen, maybe students are getting smarter. Hopefully that's the case. And hopefully I'm, I'm uh, kind of contributing to that. <laughs> and if that's the case, if I made you a bit smarter with this stuff, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you need help with this, I would check out like my algebra course, uh, Algebra 1, Algebra 2. But this is more like Algebra 1 level, maybe even like pre-algebra, but I really get into this more in like my um, Algebra 1 course. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.